fades. Uh, not the most interesting of subjects, but probably really important in a audio editing and engineering point of view. You typically learn that you need a short fade in at the beginning of an event and a longer fade out on the end of that event, although obviously that rule can change depending on context. But until now, it's been a bit of a pain to apply them for a number of reasons in Cubase if you're doing a lot of edits at once. And also the ability to store a particular fade in or fade out length has not been present. So trying to set something up which allows you to do that consistently and quickly has not been that easy for various reasons which we won't go into. But that's now changed because the way that fades can be saved has changed in Cubase 12. And as a result, my life's a lot easier. So let's see why. So here we are in Cubase, and as you can see, I've imported a recording, which is a typical sort of length recording from the kind of voiceover work that I often uh, do as part of my task. Now, my previous workflow would be to cut this up and then manually apply fades to all of this, which is moderately tedious, but particularly when you've got uh, a lot of these to do. Being able to automate this is great and standard fades allow that. So what we'll do is we'll just take a look at the standard fades first. I'm just going to cut this just so we get some idea. And the standard fades are under audio fades and you can apply standard fade in and standard fade out. So I'm just going to apply the standard fade in and the standard fade out. So we see those there. Now those aren't particularly to my liking, so we'll look at how to adjust them. So my typical in would be a little bit longer than that. If I was doing music stuff, I would make it a fair bit shorter, but typically on video stuff, I want it around there. So I'm going to set it to that. And the out, I typically have it around 200, 240 milliseconds or so. So it just gives a reasonable time for that to fade out. That's what works best for me. You can obviously set it to whatever you like. Now, what we want to do is to set the standard fades to be that, which is pretty straightforward. We go to audio, fades, and then open fade editors. Now, this is one thing which is slightly weird because they appear on top of each other. So there we've got the fade out, and behind we've got the fade in editors, but they're, they're doing pretty much the same. Now, you could play around with the standard curves, etc. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to leave them uh, linear. But what I'm going to do is set these to be default so i click as default for that and as default for that so now we've adjusted cubase is set default and i'm going to just get rid of those there and now apply the new standards just to show you they've changed so you see that one there and that one there so that on its own is moderately useful but being able to apply them both is really useful so you can just set a macro which does that. So let's do that. So let's just undo those two. And now let's set up the macro. So under edit and key commands, we find the macros. So let's make a new macro and call it apply standard fades. And then up here, we're going to search for what we want. So we're going to add fade in and find the apply standard fade in. So we're going to add that one. And handily, that's there as well. So we're going to apply that as well. And now with just a single keyboard shortcut, we're going to be able to apply the standard fade in and fade out on the part, which is exactly what we want. So if we look under macro here, we'll see apply standard fades has appeared already. So that's nice and handy. And I'm gonna do command shift and F and see whether that's assigned to anything. Command shift and F isn't. So then I'm gonna assign it to that. So now when I wanna apply the standard fades, I just do command shift F and we'll be in business. So there you see that's done that. The further step with this is to use detect silence and then apply that macro after it. So I've got this set to do it 
all in one go. But to to ease the work, detect silence isn't perfect, but it can be useful. It's been around for a while. Apparently, it's under the advanced menu. So detect silence. We can see that's probably a little bit too much. So I'm going to set that to 2,000, which should reduce that. And also minimum time close, 2,000. That might be a bit too far, but let's just go with that for the time being. And then I'm going to click process. And they're all highlighted. And now I can just use my macro, so command shift F. And they've all got their fades applied. So one of the things I used to have to do was keep applying fades. You don't have to do that anymore. So standard fades is the kind of thing that might seem a bit boring, but actually it's probably saving me an hour a week at the moment. And I like features like that. So that's why I thought it was worth drawing your attention to it. So fades, uh, as said at the beginning of this video, probably not the most exciting of things, but they're definitely necessary if you want to be a competent audio engineer. And being consistent with them and making sure you apply them is, is really important. And these changes mean you can do that. So like a lot of mundane features, they're necessary. And in this case, this is as exciting, in a sense, to me, as the addition of curves in automation, purely because my regular workflow means that I can now save about an hour of editing time every week because of those edge cases where a little glitch means I can't do a fade in or I can't do a fade out. And then I've got to do them all individually or find which one's the short one, etc. So it's just made life much easier. This is a quality of life improvement that I genuinely would pay for the Cubase 12 upgrade for just for that because it would pay for itself in a couple of weeks. Simple as that. So as ever, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please like, subscribe, comment, and watch the other Cubase 12 videos which are on the channel. And we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.